Um, uh, as Tom has mentioned, my name is uh, Frédéric Fortin. I'm geneticist for CIPOC, and I'm very happy that uh, OSF has uh, invited me and uh, Amélie to do this uh, this presentation. Uh, it's uh, um, the title of the presentation. It specializes in advanced she class. Uh, the idea between all this, because as mentioned. As Tom has mentioned, there's another presentation on the 23rd and uh, what we hope it's there will be again other uh, meeting after those two presentation. It's uh, uh, maybe I can give the example of what's happened in, in, in Quebec and uh, Joanne Cameron, which is the president of the Quebec Sheep Breeder Association. Uh, was supposed to do this introduction, but I will do it. It's uh, what's happened in Quebec. It's since 2014, 15, the breeders, uh, they start to organize or plan some uh, uh, breed group meetings. And the idea behind that, it's uh, say we do have a genetic evaluation program and we can provide some theory about how the program is, uh, is working. But when it's time to do some genetic improvement and to work uh, within producer or breeders to um, to, 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 do, to do these uh, genetic improvement. Uh, the, 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 the breeding stuck between the breeders is exchanged within breed. And in some way, the situation or what is needed and what we do or the selection objective is or could be a little bit different within uh, or, uh, when we compare the the, 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 the the different breeds. Then for that reason, the, 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 the Quebec Breeder Association, they decided to start to have some breed group meeting uh, within the province of Quebec. And when they start these first or couple of breed group meeting, then they wanted to add some more uh, genetic or uh, scientific background to it, then they made uh, two projects that they get some funding from the MAPAC, which is the Government of Agriculture of Quebec. And within those uh, two projects, they start, or we have been able to develop some uh, adapted or personalized report uh, for those pre group meetings. And within those reports, what we can get, it's two different reports. One report that is uh, for individual flock for each breeders, for each uh, breed of the breeders. And another uh, report that we produce, it's, uh, we call it kind of virtual flock, and it's a group of, a breed group of breeders, but we, we bring all together the you or the animal of those breeders with, like we consider them as a, the same uh, flock. And we look at different parameters uh, that can explain uh, or they can have an effect on the genetic uh, the genetic gain and it's kind of benchmarking and it's kind of a place that they can see okay how good the breed is doing compared to other breeds and how each producer or breeders are performing compared to other uh, uh, breeders and it, it looks like maybe a place that it's kind of uh, advice given by the geneticists on what you need to do to do more genetic gain. But uh, sincerely, it's, uh, it's totally not that. It's, uh, it's funny to see that. If, I think even at the beginning, it was uh, or the breeders think that way that uh, I find it or we found it that the best person to give an advice to another breeders to change the way they do things to make more genetic gain it's when they receive an advice from another breeders. Then it's when we can have those breeders together discussing about what they are doing, what they can do to improve what they are doing, that we see that they are changing slowly their way of, of doing things. And it has been tested by one of their friends or one of the breeders of the group. Then they are pretty much sure that it's feasible and it will work in their, in their flock. Then, Technically, what will happen today is you will have the first presentation. I think it's the one that 
maybe I should try to find another word than boring, but it's the one that it's a lot of theory today that we will look at, but we need that theory for the other meetings. The next meeting, the one on the 23rd, if you find this presentation boring, then you should be okay with the next one that I think the next one will be interesting because the next one, it will be real data, real performance that we will look at at the breeds or a breed group that we have here in Quebec that uh, you want more the breeders, you want more the breeds, but you will see real data and difference between uh, the performance between different flock. Then for you, I think it would be very interesting and, and hopefully we will move to the next step and the next step and it's what we want to go with because it's working so well when we have those breeders talking to each other to make genetic gain. Uh, who would like to go there uh, with your group? Uh, it could be in Ontario, it could be in other provinces. The principle is we need to have breeders that they are comfortable to speak together, to each other. I will be there. I will be there also to come in, to bring some benchmarking to start or to help the discussion. But the, the key word or the key element is breeders. And because of the language you need to speak, you have to be part of it. it and it has to be done in English and it could be breeders in Ontario, but it could be breeders also from other provinces, as long as it's within one breed, because you will probably at the end, maybe sell a ram to another flock. And because we want you to work together, then we have to bring together breeders of the same breeds. And it has to be in English to make sure that we can, we can speak, uh, or you can speak to, 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 to each other. Um, then I will move slowly to my presentation. I don't think it will take more than one hour. Uh, Amiri, uh, which is, uh, she is a customer. She is uh, responsible of the customer services for breeders in English in the Genovese uh, program. Then she may be involved also in the presentation. She is invited to bring additional information or if she can sometimes raise a question to help you understand. Tom is also welcome to do it. And you are also, as the participant to that meeting, uh, very uh, welcome to interact, ask questions, uh, provide comments during my presentation. And hopefully it will be more interesting than having me uh, talking from the beginning till the end. And uh, then I'm not sure if I'm answering well sometimes your question or if I'm giving good explanation, then I prefer to have your comment during the presentation. Then it's also open to have your uh, question or comment at the end of the presentation. But if it's during the presentation, I think it's make it more interesting. And I try to move to the next slide. We'll be sure to let you know we're still here. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. And it's so nice as you have done, Tom, that we don't hear my voice from the beginning to the end. I think it's, again, it's a... Then, as an introduction, I will do the... Say, first of all, you need to believe in, in, in genetic, genetic improvement works. I will talk a little bit about Genovis, uh, and I will go directly in what I want to cover. There's four parameters that I want to talk about that uh explain the genetic gain its selection intensity genetic variation accuracy and generation interval um do i need to explain that genetic improvement works uh, i've been involved a lot in swine for me it's obvious when i start working in swine one of the traits we were working on was letter size we were having two more than two breeds, but two breeds, uh, if we compare them, the Yorkshire and the Durag breeds, they were pretty much at the same level for the number of uh, piglets born. And it's crazy. It's, uh, if we look at the breeding value, if we look uh, just at the phenotype, the performance of the animal, uh, because the Durag is a terminal breed and because the Yorkshire is a maternal breed, we have seen a huge improvement of the number of piglets uh, born in the breed just because of the, genetic improvement, uh, we can have as an example, the chicken, we can have as an example, the dairy cow also that uh, I don't think any dairy 
cow producer, can I say that? Uh, will like to go back in 1980s or 1970s and have the same performance for their cow. It's uh, it's the cow today has way too much uh, uh, performance, and 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 it's because of the genetic gain that they have achieved in the in the past and something that I need or we need to to see it more and more and more it's uh, uh, it happens also in, in in sheep we you are you are I, I do not have any sheep you are doing uh, uh, is it great or is it good but it's between the two but uh, something happened um, I never know which trade I should use but we see very nice genetic trend genetic improvement in some trait in sheep. Here I give as an example, the loin depth, it's in M shear. It's why I use uh, loin depth, it's because we haven't measured that trait too much before 2000, maybe it start 2005, six, seven, and maybe can maybe provide more detail about it. But it's from the time that we recorded this trade that the producers start or the breeders start to work on that trade that we have seen a very nice curve going up of the genetic improvement for the loin dip. Uh, when you speak to just the breeders, they will tell you that, okay, when I start in, in for example, in uh, Suffolk, they were not having that much, maybe some rare animal being uh, over 30 millimeters of uh, loin dip when they were measuring the animal uh, around 100 days. And, and right now it happens very often. And, some of them, they, they send me picture and they will show you an image and say, hey, look, wow, I'm having an animal very close or reaching 40 millimeters of loin, what we have never seen in the past. Then they just look at their numbers and if we see very nice genetic trend with the, the breeding values or the EPDs of the animal, but they just look at the performance and we have the technician taking the, the measurement and they see that it's improving because they are working on on that trade then, then then we are at i think at we are at the beginning of it we are in it happens since since some time but genetic selection genetic improvement works and works very well and we still have a lot to do in sheep uh, we can do it because we have performance but because we have a very nice genetic uh, sheep canadian sheep genetic evaluation program it's the name is genovis uh, it's useful for the purebred or the breeders uh, purebred producer but we have to not underestimate that uh, those that they are doing multiplication producing f1 also can get a lot of use of uh, the the, the, the Genovis program and more and more I would like to see some commercial producer using it because they can get some performance data that they can look at it and use it for management but also their performance can be useful for the evaluation of purebred animals and also uh, nonetheless we have to mention that we have also a dairy module in our uh, Genovis or genetic evaluation program that is used more and more by some producers uh, then it's the simple principle of it is we need performance, we need pedigree, we need it on many animals, and then it's the magic of data that uh, we are able to do to estimate breeding values of, of the animals. And this magic of data, this recording has been possible because uh, of the involvement of uh, Bill Scott Nicky. Uh, Larry Schiffer, which is a geneticist uh, uh, that has been a professor for a very long time, a very well-known um, uh, professor around, I can see even around the world, they were both at uh, um, sorry, at Guelph University, at Sigil, and it's in Ontario, then they have developed this uh, very nice program, which is Genovis. It's on the web and all the data is, uh, the database is um, is, is, is uh, saved on the, on the cloud. Uh, then you just need a password and a user ID to, 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 to enter your, your data or access to your data. The breeding values are generated or calculated every week. Uh, we have a meeting planners, we have different report, uh, some report for genetic selection, but some report also for the management in Quebec for 
also there's a traceability module on it and yeah, we are still doing some uh, development to it and the way we see it it's a toolbox a toolbox that we provide to the breeders and still the job that needs to be done it's it has to be done by the by the by the breeders and 15 breeding value EPDs are available through this uh, program I won't go through it but you can see them on the screen and from the, those 15 breedings value, we are calculating indexes and indexes is only or simply a combination of these EPDs to make it more simple uh, for the breeders to select the right animals. And for terminal breeds, we have two indexes, again, in the carcass index. Uh, for prolific breeds, uh, we have a Matt and Matthew index mainly, not only, but mainly to increase the winning weight or and the, for the maternal breed, it's not mainly, but the, a trait that we put some more phases on it, it's the increase of the number born, then it's the Matt HP and the Matthew HP index. And if we ask you the question, what it's needed to be done to do some genetic gain, then I think the answer we'll get from you is you have simply to select the top animal and to pull the less good one, then to select the animal with the higher index and that what will generate some genetic gain. And, and the idea of the presentation of today is to go through all the things that may be or are important and Again, it's in, in preparation for the 23rd of September, the second presentation, or even later when we will have, hopefully, a uh, breed group meeting with, uh, with you guys that uh, then you will know the theory why we are looking at this specific report on your flock or for your group of, of breeders. Okay, then the question that we are raising is, what are the ways, what is important to optimize genetic gain? And to optimize genetic gain, the first item that we will see is yes, we have, well, we need selection intensity. We need to select the offspring, the best animal from, from the group of the, the offspring if we want to, 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 to generate some, some, some genetic gain, but it's more than that. There's also the variation, genetic variation, which is another parameters. There's the accuracy, which is another parameters, and there's the generation interval, which is uh, maybe the fourth parameter. Then we will go through this presentation to all these uh, different parameters that are important to um, to explain the gene thinking. And those parameters, it's it's a mathematic formula, as simple as that. It's and then all those parameters, it could be for each tray. And it's a genetic gain that it will be the unit of the tray that we could use and calculate the selection intensity, calculate the genetic variation, calculate your accuracy, calculate the generation interval, and we will get the value of the genetic gain. We won't go through it uh, when we will do a breed group meeting because it becomes a little bit too much theory, but it's in theory or even in practice, we, we could do it. We could do it to calculate specifically what is the genetic gain for a group of breeders or for a specific uh, breeder. Then let's start with the selection intensity. Then selection intensity, it's from parent to offspring. What are the percentage of animal that we, we, we select? Are we selecting, for example, here, the 10% of person top uh, performing or animal having the highest genetic merit? Are we selecting the 25%? Are we selecting maybe the 30 or 40 top person animals. If we will be here in the middle, it could have been the average. Then if you look at the breeding value of the offspring and the breeding value of the offspring is the average of the breeding value of the parent, then what 
what is the meaning of that? It's, it's, it's you are not doing any genetic improvement. You are not doing any, any genetic gain. It's because you choose the offspring and the merit of the offspring is as good as the parent. And you understand that you have to go at some level in selecting uh, the best animals. And, and we wanted, and it's what we will look at when we will have those meetings, it's we wanted to give you is it recommendation? I think it's a little bit too, uh, it, it's maybe a, a, a Tom's rule. Can I say that? It's, it's, it's kind of a more um, indication of how you could do your selection intensity and we can compare breeders to breeders, flock to flock to see what is applied. And one of the, 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 the indication that something that could be that we can be considered as good. It's here the example that I gave. It's we, we, we do it simply. It's a, it's a herd. It's a flock. Sorry. It's a flock that we are having just 100 view, okay, views. And suppose that we, we keep it simple. We, we have just one lambing per year, then and we produce two lambs per lambing. Then we will have, because we will go sex by sex, we will have 100 use will produce 100 uh, female and 100 males per year and one indication or recommendation is maybe strong but one recommendation indication of a good selection intensity for female because female it's expensive and you may need maybe a replacement re rate or calling rate of maybe later we will say 25 30 percent but let's say 20 percent then Suppose you need 20 ewe lambs to replace your female, then what we recommend, and, and we know that on the 100 female that you will produce per year, uh, you need to do some phenotypic selection. So you need to look, you need to look at the conformation of the animals. And, and we can say, and I think it's a, it's a rough number, we can say that maybe 50% of the animal will be called just based on the phenotype, just based on the confirmation. And we would like you to apply or as an indication to select at least the 40% top index of the animal. And the main trade we look at, and I think when we think it's maybe normal, the main trade we look at is that the confirmation, it's very important to work on the confirmation of the animals. And we want to select some animal, the top one, based on the genetic merit of the animal. And here, what we can apply, it's just a 40% top index. Then here is, again, just to give you an e example, this is the 100 female that we have produced within a year. And from, if we apply 50% phenotypic selection, we see in French, taux de selection, selection rate, I think, apply maybe in English. And then we have is here 50, female, you lamb, and you will select 20 of them, then you will apply a 40% index selection rate. And you will get here your 20 lamb. And that will be a good indication of a good selection intensity. And let's do the same thing, but for the male, for 100 you, you maybe need five male or rams per year. And we believe that you can apply also the 50% phenotypic selection. But here we know that it's say it's, it's very important to generate the genetic gain from the male side. And the advice recommendation or maybe the indication we can give it's please put in place for a good selection intensity, 10% index selection. Then on the 50 male that will remain from the phenotypic selection, you will select the five top animal just based on the index uh, that you are working on. Is it the terminal breed or maternal breed or whatever? It's that you will apply here some selection based on the breeding value on the index of the animals. And we can look at those numbers and it will go, give good selection intensity. And again, it's something that we will look at in your breed group meeting. Okay, what are the breeding value of the animals and how well or where it is a good 
uh, index value for your specific breed if you want to be in the 10% and if you want to be on the 40% uh, selection rate for the, for the male and the female. This is the kind of thing we will look at in specific flock of all the breed group. To give you again indication, you can beat that, you can be a little bit worse than that, but the, the, the idea is to do some benchmarking and the idea is to give you some reference, okay, where you are and what is the target or some kind of target you can try to reach. And here it just, again, a recommendation or indication or summary of what I just mentioned before. Purebred, do not forget that we are today, and I think it's Emily that put it in the presentation, and it's a reminder for Fred, for me, to say that do not forget that we talk about genetic selection, genetic improvement, genetic gain, then we talk about breeders that want to do or generate gen genetic progress or genetic gain, then and there's also other function for breeders or for producer, you can be in multiplication. If you are doing commercial uh, commercial production in, within your your flock and multiplication and purebred selection, you have to consider that it's only applied the rules that I'm telling you to the purebred animal that you use for genetic selection or as a purebred uh, flock. Uh, then you have to be careful to that. It's the, the part of your flock that is used for genetic improve, improvement. Second parameter that we can look at that has an effect on the genetic gain is the genetic variation. Uh, we can go through those five items, standard deviation of breeding value and breeding management, population size and genetic exchange, genetic importation. And I will go back to the consideration of molecular genetics. I have to not forget about it, but I, I will go back to that. Um, genetic variation, by definition, it's simply the standard deviation of the breeding value. Then it may be, it's the one that you may not have that much control of it or impact of it or may depend of the different trait. Uh, a good example of what I just mentioned, it's the number born or the litter size. If I compare two breeds, I'm very sorry when I talk to a Dorset breeder that they would like to improve the litter size or the number of lamb born. It's very difficult because there's no genetic variation within that breed for that specific trait. There is, but little. Then it will take a couple of, or it will take many years before we can achieve some genetic improvement. And it's sad because if you look at other breeds like the Romanov, and I look at the genetic variation, it's again, it's just an example for you to understand the principle. If we look at the Romanov breed, it's very easy to find some genetic variation. And I can or we can achieve a lot of things for that trait in the one of Romanov. If we would like to decrease a lot the number born, it's possible. The average is maybe around three and we could go much more lower than that to two or even below two. And if we would like to increase the number of lamb born per letter, we could go easily. Maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but it's feasible rapidly to go to maybe 3.5, 4, even over 4. But you understand that it's not the goal. We don't want to increase. We don't want to de decrease the number born in that breed, but it's kind of possible to do it given that there's genetic variation available for that specific trait in that, in that breed. The component for genetic variation that you do have some control on it, it's the inbreeding level or the inbreeding management. And what we recommend, because what you don't want to achieve, it's too much inbreeding. If you have too much inbreeding, what will happen, it's uh, you will have less genetic variation than less possibility for genetic improvement. And what we recommend 
again, it's always on models, on indication that we gave you. It's supposed to take the example we have uh, or we had with the 100 views flock. It's maybe if you change the five runs every year, uh, then uh, what it will do, it will you will be able to maintain some 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 good inbreeding uh, level. If you are with that, if you are uh, careful about the number of uh, mates that you will have per ram, if you have a maximum of twenty mates per ram, or you try to have around twenty mates per ram then it helps to maintain a good inbreeding level. Uh, if you are careful when you select your new RAM, uh, you, sorry, your uh, LAM, RAM, uh, and they are not from uh, the same sire, uh, it will help a lot also to maintain some uh, inbreeding level. And we have within uh, the Genovis uh, program uh, a mating module that help you to look at inbreeding level prior that you put a specific RAM with the U for the for the meeting. Then using all that tool, some of those rules, um, you will be able to, 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 to maintain a good inbreeding level. And this is some kind of indication number that we will give you in, in the report. And also, we will look directly at the inbreeding level of the breed um, group or of the different individual flock. And if we look at your specific flock, what is the inbreeding and the evolution of the inbreeding level, then we will raise some concern or we will see that there's no problem uh, with the inbreeding level within your uh, specific uh, flock. We can go through through this um, because it's. I think it's one thing that is really important. When we look at specific flock, it, it's sometimes difficult because it's there's a lot of fluctuation, and we need to have many years to see if there's really a problem that uh, appears to to happen within within a flock. And then I prefer that we look at the group of breeders in, uh, in a breed group to look at the evolution of the breeding level. And one of the indication we are looking at, it's we, we try to be or to get less than one person uh, in, increase in the inbreeding level every 10 years. And it's one of the target, we may be a little bit over that, it's not too much of a concern, depending of what also what is the inbreeding level at the beginning of or, or at the end of the uh, on the, the level of inbreeding level, but it's mainly the the, the, the things we are or the the, the, the statistic or the 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 the, um, the number we are looking at when we look at the inbreeding level. It's we try to not have too much in, increase within a certain period of time, and one person every ten years. It's our reference. Uh, one good way to manage the uh, genetic or to help in the buff. Well, one good way. It's something that we will discuss in breed group meeting. It's uh, it's and I think it's something that you have to be aware. And the number we are using it's two hundred and four hundred. You then then I mentioned about the virtual flock. It's all the use from one breed from all the breeders of the group. And suppose that you are 10 uh, breeders uh, having each 100 ewes, then we have 1,000 ewes of a specific breed, then 1,000 ewes, it's a lot of ewes, then you won't have, if you do good genetic exchange between the different breeders, you won't have any problem with the inbreeding level within time. But, but we say it's over 400 ewes, it's not a problem. But if you have within your group less than 200 ewes, then we are raising some concern that or we give you the information that it may become a concern in, uh, through the years that the inbreeding level may go up if you do not have uh, some uh, import uh, of some semen or live and uh, a live animal from outside your uh, breed group then it will be important to consider that in your uh, 
let's say your your the management of your of your uh, virtual flock, all the breeders together. Uh, then genetic import can be part of the 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 the, 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 the meeting we will have. Uh, one thing we just mentioned it's it's good to increase the genetic variation or variability of the of the of the breed for the different trait. <coughs> but I think another thing we will look at, and it's very important, and you are aware of that, that when you bring, we bring animal from outside the group, uh, we are looking to improve, to, to get animal that is having a uh, higher genetic merit. And then it's, it, I think it's something that we underestimate from a genetic evaluation program. Genetic evaluation program can help you to, with the animal that you have or with your neighbor breeders, the, the breeders we work with uh, can help you to select the best animal. But we always forget that when you import some animal, if we produce some offspring and those offspring will produce some other offspring, then at the end or through the time, we will get a lot of performance from those animals and those performance will give up will give us some uh, precise breeding values and then we can identify okay is it better to import animal from USA from Australia from Europe or then it's really good it's very valuable information that we can get from those uh, animal coming up from outside your group your province or your country uh, there can be some disadvantages, some, we can have some loss on some trade. Sometimes when we import animal, they may be good on something and may be bad on, on something else, then, but may bring some genetic variation or variability on, on some trade that we will look at, but we will have or need to be careful about something else. There's always, always some cost also to it that we can discuss or, or look, but, but again, genetic import can be covered and can be a way to compensate or to help to get some more genetic variation as as well as getting better handle accuracy accuracy that one i believe you had it's a, it's a lot of details that the breeders and it's maybe there that the breeders can make uh, a lot of difference uh, in the genetic uh, genetic game. The the accuracy I will cover it with three items. I will cover it with the data quality of the trade measure on the animal, the uniform and control environment, and the information on relative and number of projects. The first one I think you probably understand it very rapidly. Uh, suppose that you don't have a weighting scale that uh, is well calibrated then if forget it and understand that garbage in garbage out it's uh, we can have uh, Larry Schiffer that has developed a great uh, genetic evaluation program but uh, if the performance are not well recorded it's uh, you won't get good breeding value for 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 for, for those animals then we can say the same thing for present measurement uh, we when we then there's thing that when I will do the report to for the breed group or for individual flock, uh, say it's I, I have no way to look at the, at the calibration of the weighting scale, but but I do have some means that we can look if you have collected well the different trait. Have you collected the bird weight on all the lamb at the, at birth and bird weight do not. Uh, forget that or underestimate that bird weight will help you to get better precision on the winning weight. Uh, bird weight can help you also to estimate other traits like the survival of the lamb from birth to winning. Then again, it's collecting more information, even if it's on a different trait, given the phenotypic and genetic correlation, it will. It would help to get better precision in in the breeding value of the animal, and and those things we can look at. It's uh, the, the the number of uh, the the mortality rate is an example. I've seen some flock that they in a prolific breed they can get 
very low mortality rate. They have five percent mortality rate. It's, it's, I haven't, I've never seen that. You can be a very good breeders, and you can have maybe ten or fifteen percent. But if, or maybe if you have a very low number of you and you take care of them, then I would believe it. But if you have large flock and you can have five percent mortality in, in a prolific breed, I think it's good that we raise it. We we, we see it on the report, and we can. You can say, okay, maybe there's a lot of lamb that they were maybe dead at birth and you have not declared it. And it's really important to declare it because we want to have the information. We want to have the litter size and we want to know which you can have larger litter size and a lot of lamb born alive. And, and we need those, those, those information. It's really important and we can look at it in, in those reports. Um, number of uh, or to identify and we will come back to that uh, well the land that has been uh, fed by the bottle or phosphor the the collection of the number born and raised it's it's in, in a very accurate way is really important um here it's what we we explain and the program genovis can allow us to do that to 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 to, to when we look at the winning weight we can declare that this piglet and that it's my swine background, sorry. The lamb, we can declare the lamb has been uh, weaned but by the biologic dam or by a foster dam, or if that has been weaned or fed by a bottle, then it's really, really, really important to have, because we want to give the genetic merit to the foster dam or to the biologic dam or to not give them any merit because it has been fed by the by the by the bottle and you understand that and it's a key point in our genetic evaluation program a, a huge uh, improvement that Larry Schaeffer has done uh, a couple of years ago but the Genovese program allow us to very well consider the genetic uh, merit of uh, each of those uh, by not the bottle but to, 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 to make the difference between the bi biologic dam and the foster dam. And, and, and it's, it's really important to be able to, to do that in our genetic evaluation program. But it's up to you to, to do a very nice declaration or a very nice recording of those uh, uh, information. To have a uniform and controlled environment, uh, you understand that uh, we tend, and we will talk a little bit later about the contemporary group that within that group, if we take one ewe or one lamb and we give him more chance to perform better, then you can get the best genetic evaluation program, but say, we could not be able to, to, to make the difference between the genetic merit of the animal and the contribution of the environment. And it's very important that you do well your job, that the environment that we record the information are within, again, within the same control and the same uniform environment and no preferential treatment is 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 applied um do not forget that it's a way that I explain it i think it makes it more simple it's we it's like the, the the genetic version program do not use the performance by itself it use the difference in the performance from the animal with the average performance of the management group it's pretty much the way that it's it's working. Then you see why it's so important to get good management group. And in, in, in the report that we will look at, it's it's something that we will have the chance to see within each flock. Okay, what are the management group? Uh, how many you have? How many lamb per management group that you have? How many rams per management group we have been able to to see and then from that specific report, we can make some recommendation to, 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 to do some, 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 uh, some improvement. And here it's, yeah, we have to, 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 to compare uh, animal raised in the same period of time, having the same feeding management and within the same barn. It's possible if you have two different barn to have two separate uh, management group. Uh, tips to create better management group. Uh, Group lambing, it's helped a lot because you will have more lambs with more similar age, which means that the age difference within the group will be smaller, which means that the adjustment for the 
So the, 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 the weight at 100 days and 50 days or the growth from 50 to 100 days will be less between animals because they are pretty much the same age, which means also that all the measure of the group of lamb will be done during the same period of time. You won't have within the same group different weighting. And, and this is some kind of recommendation or tips that we give to, to manage the, 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 the or to have a good management group. The three different ram it can be trees it, at least. It's it's right. It could be two to three. One it's it's not good because the, we cannot we have a compound effect between the ram and the the, the, the environment that the, the, the group of lamb is, is having. We need at least two, but if we can get three, then that, that, that's much more much more better than what we recommend. It's at least three different ram per management group. And, and if we can get a similar, not exactly the same, but if we can get similar number of, uh, of mate per ram, it's even if, even if ram two is not that good for, because we are looking at some growth trade, it's, we want to know it. We want to produce some offspring from RAM2 to get better precision of the breeding value of RAM2 and to know, to be sure that it's not that good. Or sometimes for the maternal trait, we need to get use, we need to get lambing from this use, for, from those use to get breeding value for number born, for piglet sur uh, lamb survival, for uh, the contribution of the U for the winning weight, and uh, we need to get some data from from all the animal to to even if they are not that good, we want to know that they are not that, that good. And we have a meeting planner to to help us to 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 do that. Uh, that one I will go rapidly through it. It's uh, what we want to see. It's again to get the maximum number of lamb. Uh, from the same sex per management group uh, and we mentioned it before a winning strategy is to if we can get uh, we can synchronize or get large uh, or, or landing in a short period of time then it's much more much more better um, for the accuracy we have to mention that the irritability of the trait is, is, is important. It's uh, the higher the irritability is and the more rapidly the, 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 the accuracy will, uh, will increase with the amount of data that will be collected. And here you have a very nice example of uh, for three traits. We have the, if we have a trait of with an irritability of 10%, 30%, and an irritability of 50%, it's, uh, you will see that if you get the performance on only two parents, then this is the difference in accuracy for the EPD, you will get 23, 20, 39, and 50, then it's much more accurate if the irritability is higher than, than lower. You have an example of some trait here. And if you had the performance of one of spring. Uh, sorry, this is the, sorry. Here, this is the performance of only the two parent, and the animal by itself don't have any 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 uh, sorry any any performance. If you record the performance of the animals, then we are at the end of the growing phase, for example, and that enable to record one of the carcass trait and the irritability of the trait is. For example, it's a little bit higher than that, but for example, it's point dead. Then you will just having the performance on the parents, the performance on the animals and breeding and the calculation of the breeding value from those three performance, then you will get accuracy of seven one. And it's it's really, really good compared to uh, irritability for a trait like the number born with the performance of an animal and the two parents at 32. And you see that it's much more important to add performance from progeny, especially for trade that the irritability is low, that we can still get after a lot of progeny some reliability or accuracy in the, in the EPD compared to when the trait is already with a high irritability. We, we do not have gain 
we still have some gain, but we do not have as much gain than for uh, a trade where the liquidity is low. And, and the main message from all this, it's you need to record as much information as possible from all the animal of your flock. And it's something that we will look in the report. And if you can convince some of your client, if you're doing some multiplication and or setting uh, use lamb to commercial producer, if they can be part of the genetic of Genovis, the genetic evolution program, then the, the animal you will sell, we have their size and all those data will be used to better precise the breeding value of your animals. And it's, it's again, it's part of the genetic evolution and it's really important and something that we should all have to look at. Then I won't go through this slide, you can look at it, but it's again, the key point to improve to, to improve breeding values, accuracy that we just uh, we just mentioned about. And I will just look at the time. Then we are close to eight o'clock, but we are pretty much at the end. And I have kept the last parameter and none of the less uh, for the end, the generation interval and the one that uh, I'm always having very good argument with the, 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 the breeders and it's the one that uh, uh, some have done great change and has improved it a lot and some other has some difficulty to, to, to change their, uh, their, their, their way of using their RAM in, in the flock. And here, what you see, we understand that smaller generation interval will have a small effect also on the accuracy, maybe less accuracy, but all we mentioned about the selection intensity, genetic variation, accuracy give you some kind of genetic gain you can achieve. And the generation, it's really, uh, the generation interval, it's you divide it by, by it. And, and, and there's room for improvement for generation interval, probably in, in, in most, or if not all of your flock, it's, uh, it's crazy, crazy. We can, we can almost uh, improve it uh, or reduce it by by two, then we can probably increase the genetic gain by two. Just working on on, on the, the generation interval, and I, I really do have a lot of data from many breeders uh, to 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 uh, to explain it or to 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 see it. That uh, if I look at your flock, probably most of the ram at the birth of the animal, they are maybe at 35, 36. Some of you may go up or well, between 40 and 50 months old and the age of your ram when your lamb are born, in average. And someone that are careful to it can probably reduce it below 24, uh, 24 months. Then if we go from 48 to 24, then from the male side, we can reduce it or we can improve it by two and have a huge impact on, on the genetic gene. It, it, it's one of the parameters and maybe can, can, can talk about it also and she can she can tell you that uh, I, I have a lot of discussion with our then with, with, with our readers that okay please you you you, you um you get attached to your ram. There's a problem there, or maybe there it's it's their kids that they they, they love too much the, the the ram they are having and they want to keep it and and they keep it a very long time. But they tell me it's a it's so nice. It was so rare to get such a good confirmation and good breeding value. Then you want me to sell it or to kill it? I can do that. And then <laughs> it's a it's a principle that it's very tough for the breeders to to change, but it's it's something that we really need to, to work on it. And I'm sure you understand the principle and it's part of it that the younger the parent are, smarter the generation interval would be and better will be the, the, the it's it's the rapidity at, at which we, we, we do the genetic, uh, the genetic gain. Then we give as an indication, a recommendation to replace the RAM, all the RAM every year. And you can see some time, we can keep it a little bit longer, but we try to give, it's maybe a strong recommendation, but 
if it's possible. And maybe it depends also from the from breed to breed. It's different situations. Sometimes you can sell easily rams, but sometimes it's not, or it's much more difficult, and it become more more expensive. For the for for the ewe, we are more careful. It's it's good to have older you to get better precision on the breeding value and also there's a, there's a huge cost associated to 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 to, to the you then to have the 20 25 30 percent replacement rate rate we can we can live with it but 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 the ram it's really important to to have a, a fast turnover um then we want that when we look at the because again it's it, because we want to apply the selection intensity and all the other parameters at the same time, but we, we, we recommend to select the, um, the top 10% index uh, male rams uh, and add breeding if it's possible, they can be as young as less than one year old, the ram at breeding. To get in average, this is the recommendation that or the indication we give that at lambing, the lamb, when we look at the age of the ram, in average, it can be less than two years old. This is this is the target that uh, that we give, and, and some breeder they have made huge improvement, and they can they can achieve. Uh, for the U, or we we say that we select the top 40 percent index, which means that are attached to it that to, to have a 25 30 percent replacement replacement rate. Uh, at, at breeding, the you can have less than 2.5 years old in average, and can be older and some younger, and which means that at land big, it's maybe less than, than three years old, but again, it's an average, and some are older and some are younger. And that's pretty much it. Then my conclusion, it's, uh, that was the four and this is what the simple thing we wanted to discuss or talk or explain because it's we are there to 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 to, to make if it's possible some genetic gain then it's we need to work or to improve selection intensity genetic variation accuracy and generation interval and it's what we went through and it's it's the four parameters that uh, it will be more practical. I won't be in theory specifically looking at those parameters when we have, will have the next presentation at the end of September, but it's always in relation with those four parameters because we want to look at uh, performance data in your flock that are related to uh, the genetic Im improvement. This is my job. This is what we are working for. There's many other aspects that are as important that can be discussed between you, but but we are specifically focusing on that, trying to increase or optimizing the the genetic gain. Um, just acknowledgement to the funding uh, that partner that has been behind the 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 the. the development of this presentation or the different report that you will see again at the end of September. Uh, never forget about uh, sorry Bill and Larry that and Sigil that they, they, they are those that have made it possible to have such a great genetic evaluation program or the Genovis program and therefore the translation communication work with breeders and but they have those they are those that uh, we are able to do all this because we have developed this uh, program and the Genovis program is also possible because of the involvement of uh, OSF for sure, but also CPOC and uh, CSB. Um, and I would like to mention if you need any advice or you have any question more specifically about Genovis uh, or uh, responsible of the customer services in English it's uh, Miss API you have here hold the coordinate to contact her and if you have any question I'm more than I will be more than happy to, to answer them. <laughs>